So about a month and a half ago, I unboxed the single densest object in the known universe. Today, we will be talking about the HyperX Alloy FPS Pro and why it is... It, it, it's close. It's very, very, very fucking close. It's not there though. I'm trying to hit 10,000 subscribers before the end of the year. If you guys do go on to enjoy this video and you want to see more content like this, consider subscribing. I might shoot you if you don't. Oh guys, the black kid said he's gonna shoot somebody. Woo! In the time that I've had this keyboard, there's some things about it that I've found I absolutely love. Like, hands down, absolutely fucking love. And then there's some things I just absolutely fucking hate. Now, granted, some of these things are personal. I'm a, I'm a bit of a weird typer, so it, it can be perceived as these are all just personal issues, but I still feel like these should be talked about just in case someone else has these personal issues. So let's get into it. First impressions of the keyboard were, I didn't pay enough for this thing. Unbelievably beautiful, high ass build quality. In fact, I knew it was quality from the second I picked up the USPS package off my porch because it weighed about as much as Pokimane's fucking bank account. If someone donated $80 million to me, I'd probably give like 10 million to Alinity just so she'd leave Twitch. Upon my first impression, realized that uh, actual mechanical switches are a whole hell of a lot def different, okay, different than Mecha Membrane. In fact, there are some things I didn't really like about them, but I'll talk more about those in like a dedicated mechanical switch video later on. I don't fucking know. The keys did, and to this day, still do feel amazing. And talking about the keys, Let's talk about the lighting a little bit too, before we get into all the negative bullshit. Now, fuck. Didn't think about that, did I? Cable management, ladies and gentlemen, cable management. Well, there's some things I hate about these keys. There's some really good features to them. These keys are actually removable, so you can replace them with whatever the hell you want. The switches are removable though, those are, uh, those are staying. But you get to see the beautiful blue switch and the red light underneath. Now, something about the lighting with this keyboard that I want to talk about is not only do I like it better than Razer, but I think it's a lot cooler. Like, they have their RGB shit down. Like, down, down. Like, on fucking point. And I still like the RGB on this keyboard better for one very, very small reason. The tops of these keycaps are painted, but the undersides are not. So the underside is this white reflective material. And when you put it on your keys or on your switches or whatever the fuck, they reflect off that white surface and go back down to the keyboard. So you get this nice underlighting with the keys. I think it looks badass, especially when you have it sitting down, uh, like on a black desk that has a reflective surface. I painted this desk. It has a polyurethane coat over it. It's super glossy looking. So there's always this red line across my desk of just the keys. It looks so badass. It's the little things these companies do that make me love them so much. Like the little things Razer does with its controllers. It's why I'm kind of a Razer fuckboy. I'm only really a Razer controller and maybe a keyboard fuckboy though. Maybe, maybe a mouse one too. Okay, and all of their accessories. The keyboard's included braided cable is literally perfect. First impressions of it were a little eh, because it was stiff. It was noticeably stiff. And all the Razer products I have, they have these stupid fucking cords. See, now I have to fucking put my cord back behind my desk. And I'm gonna have to reroute that later. Great. But the cord of this keyboard is uh, noticeably rigid. Now this is only a six foot cord, which is another reason why I absolutely fucking love it because 10 foot cords, there's so much to deal with with cable managing, dude. You know how much, it's so much work with goddamn 10 foot cords. Like, my controller has a 10-foot cord, and half the time, it sits down at the bottom on the floor, bunched up like a little fucking... It's it just, it's too much. It's too much. So, six-foot braided cable, red and black, and like I said, the rigidity of it was a little stiff, but I absolutely love it now because it's just stiff enough. It's stiff enough to the point where if you put it in a certain position and hold it there for a second, and then you let it go afterwards while you're trying to, like, cable manage something, it will stay in that position. Like, if you're trying to round a corner, or if you're trying to make it contort in some way, it will contort in that way, you just need to leave it there for long enough. I really do like this cord, it's one of my favorite keyboard cords, actually no, this is my favorite keyboard cord of all time, it's not even USB-C. I'm gonna go over my first issue pretty quick because it's kind of stupid and it's really personal and I don't really think anyone else is gonna have this issue. I fucking hate the lighting effects on this keyboard. I used to have this effect, I call this the V-Cuda effect because I had a moy, 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 I had a moy or nota. Can we stop throwing shit because everyone's gonna go home? I can't fucking talk anymore, it's so funny. The thing that I hate about this keyboard is do you see how between the red and the black, there's no fade, so it's just this harsh red and this harsh black. When on my Onada, are these keys broken? I think these keys are broken. I didn't set these to green. I don't care. I have a similar effect 
and it's a lot smoother. Now, obviously, this is a really big personal preference, but I like that crossfade between the red and the black because it's super fucking distracting seeing this keyboard. Whenever I have any type of effect on this goddamn HyperX keyboard, I can't focus on anything else. It's like the most obnoxious thing in the setup. I hate it. So I just keep it on static, which I would kind of suggest you do too, unless you don't want to fucking seizure. The other issue I have isn't so much personal. It's it, it's really just a thing. It's the keycaps, man. They're too high. HyperX, I love you guys so much. You guys make great keyboards. Why the fuck are these keycaps so high? And why do they travel so goddamn far? My Ornata has mid-height keycaps. I've read that in multiple different places. They always say mid-height keycaps. Now, I couldn't find an actual definition or a name for HyperX's keys. I wanted to figure out what these were. I knew they were significantly bigger than my Ornata's in terms of height. The Ornata's have a little bit of a deeper crest, but look how much taller this is. Like I said, I couldn't find any names for HyperX's keys, so I'm just gonna call them full height keys because the Ornatas are mid height keys. So I, I, yeah, these are fulls, I guess. Now, you see, the problem with these keys being too high isn't that my fingers can't reach them or something like, you know, of those kids who ask about pro controllers. My issue is with the fact that I can barely fucking type with the thing. Now, granted, it's not the most impossible thing to write a script. Not possible to write a document. I just fuck up 80 times more than I, I would on my Ornata, but. I paid for this. I really wanted to get used to it. I thought I'd get used to it, and I didn't. I always end up double pressing, skipping my fingers over the wrong keys, or just fucking something up. It's just, the keys are too high, man. I can't do it. And it sucks, because I really do like this keyboard. But it's that one thing, and it's so significant. I don't, I could deal with the lighting. I don't, I deal with lighting in the proper way, by not using the shitty lighting effects. There's nothing I can do for the keycaps. I've looked for keycaps uh, for this keyboard, and all the keycaps I could find for this thing are full height keycaps. No, 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 no. Fuck you, HyperX. You guys almost made a perfect keyboard and I can't even type on it. But don't get me wrong, still love it. I still like making my videos with it. Like I said, typing isn't the best, but making my con like content creation, fine. It's perfectly fucking fine. Just don't game with it. Well, if you're, okay, I'm 5'10 and have average sized American hands. Uh, if you're above the height of 5'10 and have Above average American sized hands. Uh, you're good to go, I guess. I don't fucking know. Maybe I'm just stupid. Maybe I'm just retarded. I, I, it doesn't matter. Ending on a positive note, though, I did find the media control keys unbelievably useful. But the thing about that is, I can't really give that to this keyboard because every other keyboard has these. But I use my media control keys like a fucking maniac, especially after I got this keyboard and I started doing more work with the channel. It, it, it was crazy. It was fucking crazy. As a man who doesn't always have his death adder connected to his desktop, they're very useful. I can't praise this thing enough. I mean, it's 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 a budget god. And I know these issues are personal. I'll probably get some dislikes or some shitty comments on this video because people really do like this keyboard. But honestly, these are just some personal things. I wanted to share them with you guys. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video about the HyperX Alloy FPS Pro. I really like this box. If you did, please be sure to leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Try and hit 10,000 before the end of the year. And I'll see you guys my next keyboard review. Peace.